Slavery in Angola existed since the late 15th century when Portugal established contacts with the peoples living in what is the northwest of the present country, and founded several trade posts on the coast. A number of those peoples, like the Imbangala and the Mbundu, were active slave traders for centuries see African slave trade. In the late 16th century, Kingdom of Portugal's explorers founded the fortified settlement of Luanda, and later on minor trade posts and forts on the Kwanzaa River as well as on the Atlantic coast southwards until Benguela. The main component of their trading activities consisted in a heavy involvement in the Atlantic slave trade. Slave trafficking was abolished in 1836 by the Portuguese authorities. History Trade and conquest The Portuguese Empire conquered the Mbundu people of Angola, incorporating the local economy into the Atlantic slave trade. In 1610, Friar Luis Brando, the head of Portuguese-run Luanda Jesuit College, wrote to a Jesuit who questioned the legality of the enslavement of native Angolans, saying, We have been here ourselves for forty years and there have been many learned men here and in the province of Brazil who never have considered the trade illicit. He further stated that only a small number of natives may have been enslaved illegally, and that the Portuguese at least converted them to Christianity. Angola exported slaves at a rate of 10,000 per year in 1612. The Portuguese built a new port in Benguela in 1616 to expand Portugal's access to Angolan slaves. From 1617 to 1621, during the governorship of Luís Mendes de Vasconcelos, up to 50,000 Angolans were enslaved and shipped to the Americas. The Vergulda Valk, Dutch slave traders, bought 675 of the 1,000 slaves sold in Angola in 1660. During at least the 18th and 19th centuries, Angola was the principal source of slaves who were forced into the Atlantic slave trade. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Slavery. For several decades, slave trade with the Portuguese colony of Brazil was important in Portuguese Angola. Brazilian ships were the most numerous in the ports of Luanda and Benguela. This slave trade also involved local black merchants and warriors who profited from the trade. In the 17th century, the Imbangala became the main rivals of the Mbundu in supplying slaves to the Luanda market. In the 1750s the Portuguese sold 5,000 to 10,000 slaves annually, devastating the Mbundu economy and population. The Portuguese gave guns to Imbangala soldiers in return for slaves. Armed with superior weapons, Imbangala soldiers captured and sold natives on a far larger scale as every new slave translated into a better armed force of aggressors. A combined force of Portuguese and Imbangala soldiers attacked and conquered the Kingdom of Ndongo from 1618 to 1619, laying siege to the Ndongo capital of Cabasa. The Portuguese sold thousands of Cabasa residents with 36 ships leaving the port of Luanda in 1619, setting a new record, destined for slave plantations abroad. In the 18th century, war between the Portuguese, other European powers and several African tribes, gradually gave way to trade. The great trade routes and the agreements that made them possible were the driving force for activities between the different areas. Warlike tribal states become states ready to produce and to sell. In the Planalto, the High Plains, the most important states were those of BA and Bailindo, the latter being noted for its production of foodstuffs and rubber. The colonial power, Portugal, becoming ever richer and more powerful, would not tolerate the growth of these neighboring states and subjugated them one by one, so that by the beginning of this century the Portuguese had complete control over the entire area. From 1764 onwards, there was a gradual change from a slave-based society to one based on production for domestic consumption, and later for export. After the independence of Brazil from Portugal in 1822, the institution of slavery in Portugal's overseas possessions was abolished in 1836 by the Portuguese authorities. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Forced labor. The Portuguese Empire first established a de jure system of forced labor known as chibalo throughout its colonies in 1899, but the Portuguese government did not implement the system in Angola until 1911 and abolished it in 1913. 
Republicans overthrew King Manuel II in a coup d'état in October 1910. Workers in Mokamedes, among other cities in Angola, campaigned for abolition and manumission. In some areas forced laborers declared strikes, hoping the economic slowdown would force political changes. Carvalho Cojea Enriquez, the new governor of Mokamedes, supported their claims and directed labor complaints his way. The Portuguese First Republic, the new state, abolished forced labor again, but the employers whose businesses depended on forced labor used their political clout to lobby the Portuguese government to fire Enriquez. The Portuguese government legalized forced labor in Angola again in 1911, dismissed Enriquez in January 1912, and abolished the practice again in 1913. In 1926, the 28th of May 1926 coup d'état empowered Antonio de Oliveira Salazar in Portugal. Later that year, Salazar re-established forced labor, ordering colonial authorities to force nearly all adult, male, ethnic minorities in Portugal's African colonies to work. The government told workers that they would only have to work for six months of every year. In practice, this obligation was a life sentence of forced labor. Civil rights for natives, no longer treated as natural law, had to be earned on a case-by-case -case basis under the designation of assimilate. Less than 1% of the native population ever achieved this designation. By 1947, 40% of workers died each year with a 60% infant mortality rate. By 1940, the white population in Angola had risen to 40,000, 2% of the population. Most of these emigres, illiterate and landless, took the best farming land, regardless of availability, without compensating existing landowners. The authorities expelled natives, forcing them to harvest maize, coffee, and beans. Natives could volunteer to work on the plantations, voluntarios, or face conscription, working for $1.50 per month as contratados. This system of forced labor prompted 500,000 Angolans to flee, creating a labor shortage, which in turn created the need for more workers for the colonial economy. By 1947, 40% of the forced laborers died each year with a 60% infant mortality rate in the territory according to the World Factbook's 2007 estimates, infant mortality rate deaths, 1,000 live births in modern-day Angola was 184.44 the worst result among all countries in the world. Historian Basil Davidson visited Angola in 1954 and found 30% of all adult males working in these conditions. There was probably more coercion than ever before. Marcelo Caetano, Portugal's minister of the colonies, recognized the inherent flaws in the system, which he described as using natives like pieces of equipment without any concern for their yearning, interests, or desires. Parliament held a closed session in 1947 to discuss the deteriorating situation. Henrique Galvao, Angolan deputy to the Portuguese National Assembly, read his Report on Native Problems in the Portuguese Colonies. Galvao condemned the shameful outrages he had uncovered, the forced labor of women, of children, of the sick, and of decrepit old men. He concluded that in Angola, only the dead are really exempt from forced labor. The government's control over the natives eliminated the worker employer's incentive to keep his employees alive because, unlike in other colonial societies, the state replaced deceased workers without directly charging the employer. The Portuguese government refuted the report and arrested Galvao in 1952. In 1961, Galvao was involved in the hijacking of a Portuguese luxury cruise liner. Baixa de Cassange Revolt Workers employed by Cotonang, a Portuguese-Belgian cotton plantation company, revolted on January 3, calling on the Portuguese to improve their working rights and leave Angola. The revolt, commonly considered the first battle of the Angolan War of Independence, ended in a Blood bath, native protesters attacked São Paulo Fortress, the largest prison and military establishment in Luanda, trying to free the prisoners and killing seven policemen. The Portuguese authorities killed 40 attackers before gangs of white Angolans committed random acts of violence against the ethnic majority. Portuguese authorities killed 49 people on February 5. On February 10, Portuguese authorities suppressed another unsuccessful attempt at freeing the prisoners. 
Bakongo farmers and coffee plantation workers revolted on March 15, near Baisha de Kasanje, killing white Angolans and black workers, burning plantations, bridges, government facilities, and police stations, and destroying barges and ferries. The Portuguese Air Force responded by bombing a 320-kilometre area with napalm killing 20,000 people, including 750 white Angolans. Within the first six months of 1961, the Portuguese Army and Air Force put down the uprising and blacked out the incident to the press. The People's Movement for the Liberation of Angola MPLA said the Portuguese military killed 10,000 people in the massacre. Conservative estimates are around 400 casualties. These events are considered the beginning of the Portuguese colonial war 1961 to 1974. Topic: <laughs> After independence from Portugal. After the April 1974 Carnation Revolution in Lisbon, Angola was offered independence from Portugal. After independence in 1975, during the Angolan Civil War 1975 both the largest opposition group, National Union for the Total Independence of Angola UNITA, and the government ruled by the MPLA, used child soldiers in the Civil War. Children's rights groups have estimated that as many as 11,000 children were involved in the last years of the fighting only. Some children received weapons and arms training and fought in the conflict. Many others acted as porters, cooks, spies and laborers. In 2003, one year after the conflict ended in mainland Angola, some UNITA soldiers who were 18 or older were incorporated into the National Army and police. Others were demobilized in a national program and received needed assistance. But child soldiers, many of whom performed the same duties as adults, were denied these benefits. In current-day Angola, high levels of child trafficking, commercial sexual exploitation, pornography, forced labor, sexual slavery, and other forms of exploitation are reported, in part due to the civil war caused breakdown of social structures and traditional security mechanisms active before independence. Angola is a source country for significant number of men, women and children trafficked for the purposes of forced labor or sexual exploitation. Children have been trafficked internally and also to Namibia and South Africa for the purposes of sexual exploitation and domestic and commercial labor. The government of Angola does not fully comply with the minimum standards for the elimination of trafficking. At present, it is estimated that over one million primary school age children are out of school, the majority of them being girls. There is a strong correlation between women's education and the increased vulnerability of both mothers and children to a range of life-threatening conditions, including forced labor and prostitution. See also Atlantic slave trade History of Angola Mbingala Mbundu Slavery in Mauritania Slavery in Sudan <laughs>